Alex, of course, we are going to be keeping our eye on those areas with the tour cons of seven. But even if you're in the five or the three or the two, these storms are packing a punch outside yeah. of the tornado risk with those severe thunderstorm warnings. So we're going to cover all of it. Yes. We're going to break down all those risks. We'll be with you here on the Weather Channel through it. So let's break it down for you first with our tour con across the northern areas. Of course, the bullseye of that seven for your tour con is where your eyes go straight to. And for good reason, that means dangerous weather is likely not just possible, but I want to make sure that if you're in Fort Wayne or Indianapolis or Charleston or Roanoke, you're still paying attention. You still know where you're going to go for your tornado safe place. If you find yourself in a tornado warning as we head through your afternoon and evening hours. Now our Torcon of seven explained here. Numerous tornadoes are possible. So we could see possibly, you know, some uh, National Weather Service agencies using the word outbreak possible. So do keep that in mind and increased chance for those strong tornadoes. So we're talking about those large, long track, very dangerous tornadoes. Tornadoes EF2 or longer or, or higher. And then that long track means that they're on the ground for a very long time and that does a lot of damage. So you want to make sure that you know where you go in your home to take cover or your place of work and keep an eye on the forecast and the timing because you definitely don't want to be on the road during this. The threat for damaging winds even outside of those um, tornado warnings, the severe thunderstorm warning, 70 mi mile per hour winds or greater possible across a very large area. That is enough to do structural damage to weak structures, to do roof damage, to bring down trees. So do keep that in mind. And then of course, very large hail. When you're talking about hail, two inches or greater in diameter, that in itself is enough to do a lot of damage. So keep that in mind as well. Let's time some of this out for you. And as we've mentioned, you have that first round of storms. We don't want you to get that confused with the storms that we're gonna see heading through your afternoon and evening. You'll notice a couple different areas of storminess here. Uh, you've got storms out in front of the front, along the front, of course that front is going to sweep through and it's going to bring in a, a much cooler air mass. It's going to switch your weather completely around and that's how you know you've got a potent front moving through that cold blasting in behind it. We've got plenty of moisture in the air right now. As I mentioned, you probably feel it. Those dew points up around 60 for a lot of this area. So the atmosphere is primed with moisture. You've already had quite a bit of rain here and we're going to add more to it. A flood watch up and down the Ohio Valley stretching over into portions of Pennsylvania over into the mid-Atlantic. So Alex, we're just looking at pretty much you name the weather hazard when it comes to severe weather and we have it across this region. Yeah, we've got everything. So uh, unfortunately, really active day, even the areas that don't have the greatest tornado risk, maybe looking at damaging winds and of course flooding. We know that takes more lives, uh, especially when you're talking about significant wind threat like we have. So I'm here in Cincinnati where we have already had some storms, but then the atmosphere has been able to reload. We've got that rain that's moved back in and we're watching our next chance for strong storms. So do keep that in mind. Let's take a look at another city that has that possibility for storms. That's going to be Nashville. You've got that Torcon of five, as Alex was just mentioning. We have those storms that have moved just to the east of Nashville main area, but Murfreesboro, you're still dealing with that. Now watch what happens. You'll still have a little bit of light rain, but we have just enough time for that atmosphere to re, um, reload or destabilize as we head into your four, five, six o'clock hour. When you see the model predicting like this with the, the dark Dark maroons or even the white showing up. It's with those storms. Those are nasty storms. That's the possibility for storms with rotation, very heavy rain, damaging wind gusts as well. That's one of our concerns for the Nashville area, not just Nashville, but a, a large area that threat for damaging winds. You see it here, a city like Cincinnati, that risk for uh, winds up over 70 miles an hour. So wherever you see the kind of uh, hatched outline here, that's indicative of those winds 75 miles per hour or greater. That's our wind threat within some of those severe storms that is enough to do some damage. So this is what we're looking at when we're talking about straight line winds. You've got that dry air aloft. It gets sucked into that thunderstorm. And then, as you know, evaporation is a cooling process. So that dry air evaporates the rain, cools it off, and that heavy cold air, because the colder air is heavier, it just plunges to the surface. And what that ends up doing is creating that straight line wind threat that we're going to have. So you've got the forward storm motion combined with your straight line wind that's coming down out of the storm. And that is enough to take down trees, to send debris flying, to send objects flying. And in some cases, that's enough to do, say, roof damage. So 58 to 74 mile per hour winds. You've got limbs breaking. You've got um, that possibility of some shallow trees being pushed over. But when we're talking about that threat of 75 mile per hour winds or greater, as we do have for a large chunk of the Ohio Valley, that's when you're talking about widespread tree damage, roof damage to homes, and weak structures could possibly be damaged as well. That's not what you want to find yourself out.
well in. You don't want to be driving in this. You don't want to be um, in a vulnerable area of your home where you know you might have a weak tree. So keep all of that in mind. Of course, we'll keep an eye on all of the warnings as we head through the rest of the afternoon. And one more thing to watch. Well, early morning storms pushed through Ohio and now the sun has been back out. That's increasing the concern that this next round of incoming storms could be stronger and more dangerous. That's what's expected. The Weather Channel's Justin Michaels is live in Covington, Kentucky, just across the river from Cincinnati. Justin, you know, we have that first round of storms and sometimes people might think, oh, you know, we're, we're done with our, our storms for the day, but that is not the case. We're expecting even more potent storms for the second part of the day. How are people preparing? Wow, yeah. Well, because a lot of these storms will be moving through where a huge chunk of us are getting off of work, that rush hour timing. So you want to make sure that you have it timed out and you know what you're dealing with. Here's what we're looking at. A couple different cities pointed out here as we head through the early afternoon. Let's take a look at what you can expect. You'll notice these storms blossoming into the mid-afternoon, 4 or 5 o'clock. Cincinnati, you're dealing with those storms. Knoxville, you're in the upper 70s. That atmosphere is primed for those storms with your temperatures in the upper 70s and the dew points. Look what's happening as we're heading into that 8 o'clock afternoon. Hour. All along that 75 corridor, those storms are ongoing, and these storms are going to mean business. We've got our Torcons ranging from 2 and 3 to 5 and 7, and this is ongoing for the next several hours. A look at those lines as they take shape over the rest of the afternoon and evening. Of course, we'll keep you posted. And hours, large chunk of real estate is going to be such a busy weather day. If you're in Columbus right now, it looks a little bit like this. You've got some passing clouds, but we're getting that atmosphere to reload. This is what it's going to look like later. You see it here, the heavy rain coming down the wind and some of the ponding. We've got the ground that's already pretty wet from earlier storms, so that rain is going to add up really quickly. What I'm telling you around Columbus is that you want to be ready for all of these different risks that are going to come along with the storms that we have for your afternoon and evening. Taking a look at our Torcon for cities like Columbus down through Cincinnati, Oxford, you're included in that as well is date and a Torcon of seven is something to take very seriously. That means there is a likelihood of tornadoes, not even a possibility, but a likelihood and some of those could be strong. So we're getting our first wave of storms out. As I mentioned in Columbus, you're getting a break. You've got some sun mid 60s right now. Dew points in the 60s. You can feel that the atmosphere is reloading and you can see Tuesday. Here's 6 p.m. This is what I hate the timing on this. If you are, you know, on the road, if you have a drive, maybe an hour long drive from work, you're getting off five, you're still on the road at six. You do not want to be caught in this. You do not want to be caught in the winds and the tornado possibilities in the hail. So if you can hold off, if you can keep an eye on the radar, maybe if you can leave work early and get home earlier, that is the best bet. You definitely don't want to be on the road. And if you um, live in maybe a, a, a less safe structure, a home that is maybe not as sturdy, you want to make sure you know where you can go for safety. Stay away from those uh, windows and doors as well. This isn't just a threat across the north. It's also across the south into tonight. City like Birmingham and Montgomery with a Torcon of five. That means a few tornadoes are certainly possible and a couple of them could be strong. Outside of that damaging wind gusts are certainly a possibility and this is a nighttime threat here as this line blasts through. So again, have some way to get those warnings. Know where you go in your home to be safe if you find yourself in a tornado warning. Torcons of three to five around the Atlanta metro area. This once again is going to be an overnight threat around Atlanta and Alex, we never like to see a threat, but that overnight threat is is an even bigger risk. Yeah, wouldn't it be surprising? It's going to be impacting us from the Great Lakes region up into New England. This is going to be a snowmaker. This is going to be a wind maker. And for some of us, it's going to be significant snow. We're not talking about just a little bit of snow. We're talking about snow that could reach up to two feet in some of the higher elevations, as you see here across portions of the, the more mountainous terrain of Vermont and New Hampshire, up across upstate New York as well. So this is a system that means business. Now, Here's where we have our current winter storm warnings. You can see up over Green Bay, portions of the UP as well, and then winter storm watches that will likely become warnings as we head through uh, the next 24 hours or so and we see this filling in. Right now we're getting rain across the, the, the northeast, but this is going to be cold enough. The cold enough air is going to build in that we're going to switch this over to snow. You can see all of that snow as you look back west. Another big part of the system is going to be the winds. The winds are going to be cranking with this. So watch what happens. Here's overnight tonight into early Wednesday. You've got the snow in Green Bay, Chicago, a little bit of snow as well. And then watch how this all becomes snow. You've got that colder air building in. You can see another little low kind of forming here off the coast of the 
the uh, northeast. That is going to help those winds to crank. You're going to have reduced visibility heading into Friday as well. So we've got the gusty winds. We've got the snow coming down. We've got it coming down in a really big way as well. Travel is going to be impacted heading into portions of our weekend with those winds with that snow. Here's the setup. Looking through the mid part of the week, we've got those surface lows that are just driving that wind, just driving that snow and helping this unsettled weather stick around for a couple different days. Heavy, wet snow. You know what that means. That's going to mean some power outages as well, especially when you factor in that wind. You've got some of that heavier snow that's going to be able to cake on those trees as well. This is our snow total forecast. We're talking late today through Friday afternoon, evening into the nighttime hours, up to two feet in some places. And then, of course, we've got the rain coming along with this as well. Got more on those severe threats coming up after the break.